Haljo Bujian. Wo jiao, Denise. Long time no see. I'm Denise, the pharmacist filmmaker. So today I'm making um, this video and it's a movie review. Actually, it's a show review. Uh, it's a Netflix show I just watched um, called Well Intended Love. If you see me look down, because I have an outline that I'm following. And um, basically the way my uh, reviews are going to work, it's just like my two thumbs. So one thumb, it was good. Two thumbs up, it was great. One thumb down, it was bad. It was meh, actually. Two thumbs down, they probably didn't have good roles for women. <laughs> so um, let's get into it. So, oh, the other thing, actually. I am a spoilers person. I love spoilers. Like people, uh, there's all these people who are like, no spoilers, no spoilers. Oh my God, I can't hear it. <laughs> They're funny. But um, me, I'm like, tell me the whole story. Like my sister and I do this all the time. My sister who's my best friend. Um, we, she'll tell me a story from A to Z and I'll be like, okay, and then what happened? And then like a week later, I'll go and watch it because I was like, it was so interesting what she said. And then I'll be like, I'll, t I'll tell her about, I'll start watching it and I'll be like, oh, okay, this is where she said that. Oh, but there's all this other stuff and now I know what to look for and blah, blah, you know, like I love a spoiler because it, it, um, I don't know. I, I don't need the surprise. I'm there for like the storytelling. So that, that's just, uh, I'm going to have some spoilers. Um, you were warned. <laughs> so well-intended love. I don't usually remember people's names and Except for the main character, Mumu, I, I don't remember anybody else's name. And that's her nickname, not her actual name. So the plot in Well-Intended Love, which as of January 2020 is on Netflix. Um, basically, it's this D-list actress, Mumu. She's young, she's in her 20s, and um, trying to make it as an actress. Like doing promotions, doing different gigs, Try she has an agent and works with an agency, but she just hasn't caught her big break yet. So that's fine. She's figuring it out. She's in her 20s. She lives with her friend, her best friend, who's... Um, actually, I don't think they live together. No, but they just hang out a lot. They're best friends. Her best friend's a screenwriter, another young woman. So cool. They're both just trying to make it. Um, one day, Mumu finds out that she has leukemia. She gets diagnosed with leukemia. And her um, only chance for a cure is getting a bone marrow transplant. So they do have a match for her. However, the match is not willing to transplant his bone marrow. It's this really rich billionaire, successful 30 year old, cute um, young man. And she somehow, she gets the information of who it actually is because they weren't supposed to tell her, but she maneuvers and gets it. And then she's like, her and her friend just decide that they're going to talk to him, find him, and they're going to explain, you know, that it's her life and just beg him so that they can convince him to let her, you know, take his bone marrow and be cured. Um, they do meet him. After a lot of hijinks, after a lot of shenanigans, um, he agrees. He offers, or his offer is this. This is his deal. In exchange for him um, giving his bone marrow in a transplant to her, uh, she has to marry him. So that's where it gets, like, the premise is a little shaky because, like I said, he's a young, good-looking man billionaire runs his own company like he doesn't really have to I don't know I just don't get why he would be like I want to marry this young woman who I've never met who needs something from me so he sort of, he explains it as um he could marry like a woman from a good family uh, meaning good family meaning like a rich family basically and he could you know and um, increase his uh, empire by marrying somebody like that but she Mumu needs something from him so it's just gonna be easier so I mean I don't know it's to me that's a shaky premise but we're gonna suspend belief and be like 
yeah, it works. Um, and because that's what, you know, movies and shows are about. It's not about like everything having to be like real life. No, sometimes it's an escape. Sometimes it's just like, it's just for fun. So it's all good. We'll accept it. So they do get married and um, she does get his um, bone marrow, trans his bone marrow from the transplant. And um, they, you know, it's a romantic comedy. So they do like have a love story between them. However, it's bumpy. It's bumpy. It's like, so they start getting to know each other. Cool. Then um, he gets amnesia and he becomes really mean to her. So when she's just like, oh my goodness, you know, where is the nice guy that I knew? Everybody around him, all his friends, everybody's like, no, no, no. This is the real man. This jerky jerk, he is the real one. Now we are introducing you finally to your husband. That nice guy before who was all lovey-dovey, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That was the imposter. Hello, good morning. <laughs> this is your guy. So it, it sucks. Like he mistreats her. He almost gets back with his ex-girlfriend. Um, oh, and they had like a contract, a marriage contract. So in it, um, nobody can cheat or else you have to pay the other person $10 million. They do have to live together, but they can have separate bedrooms and um, they're not supposed to talk about the marriage in public and a couple other things. So they they both signed it and it, it was good. And it was supposed to just last two years or so. So, okay, so they were falling in love. He gets amnesia. He's a jerk. He finally gets his um, memory back. There was like a whole sinister plot around why he lost his memory. And um, then they start like going, you know, the right way again. And they're falling in love again. And, you know, they confess, you know, their love to one another. And it was great. Then she gets kidnapped. And then it's like, he had a point where he was telling somebody like, I, maybe I should have never met her, should have never married her. And it's like, okay, we're back down here again. Like, so their, their love is definitely bumpy. She gets kidnapped twice, actually. Um, he gets shot once, like so much happens, <laughs> so much happens. And, and I was there for it. It was very entertaining. Um, and there's other characters and other, you know, parts of the story that I'm not like t focusing on, but you can watch it and see it. It's a good show. Um, but for me, what I liked about it is that it was a female driven show. Like Mumu was the main character and her best friend, um, also was another supporting character and they were just young women trying to make it. And I appreciated that. There was one time when uh, her husband, the billionaire, was being a jerk to her. And this is like important, an important point for one of the points I'm going to make in a second. So he was being a jerk. She realized something really um, horrible that he had done. Not cheating. You'd have, you know, just, just go with me for a second on it. So she didn't want to be around him anymore. Then she tries, she's like, okay, I'm going to leave. I just need some space, you know? And then she realizes she doesn't have any money because this man has been sabotaging all of her acting gigs, which she did know, but she didn't realize like, oh yeah. So when he sabotages things, I don't get paid. So I don't have any money. And she's been living rent free, like in their marital home. Um, and he has given her, like he's shared his accounts and everything with her. He gave her a black card to use, but she doesn't really use it. She doesn't want to use his name. She still wants to be independent, which I respect. But, you know, I'd also respect it if she just wanted to, um, you know, be Mrs. Billionaire too. That's fine. It is her husband. Um, so she has this moment in the show where she's like, I'm not independent. I can't fend for myself. This needs to change. I need to be able to make money. And she hustles and she tries and she swallows her pride and she does what she has to do to make money. And I was really proud of her. I liked it. That That's a beautiful spirit to have, that you're going to make it regardless of the situation, the circumstance, the people around you, your love life. Like you look inside yourself and, and you go for it. Awesome. Now they're back. Good again, husband and wife lovey-dovey, in bed, pillow talk, 
you know, googly eyes at each other. And um, they talk about the possibility of having children. So he really wants kids. He's like, I'm a 30 year old man and I need to have children. And he was like, I'm so old. And I was like, wait, 30 is old? Wait, what, when did that happen? Um, no. So, um, yeah, so they're talking about having children. And then she makes this comment where she says, you know, if we have a daughter, I'm going to teach her. And I'm like, okay, all right, Mumu, what are you going to teach her? Let us know. How are you going to educate the, the young women coming up? the next generation of ladies. I'm gonna teach her good posture. <laughs> Mumu, girl, weren't you just out on the street talking about, I'm not independent. I don't have any money. Oh my goodness, I have to swallow my pride and take gigs that nobody would wanna do. But I have to make money because I haven't make, been making good choices and I've been relying on somebody else. Mumu, did your good posture help you pay the bills? Because she's a dancer. She's like awesome. She has great posture. It didn't pay any bills. She was still starving. She was eating just a, a, <laughs> a little thing. Like she was just making little cheap meals, which I respect. But she was she was suffering a bit. You know, when you're broke, she was broke for a while. So I just didn't like it. I didn't respect it. You know, she has, it's not like she doesn't know the possibilities of what can happen when a young woman or when anybody isn't able to support themselves. She just lived through it. And here she is talking about she's going to teach her daughter good posture. Get out of here, Mumu. Stop it. So then, not to be outdone by her nonsense that she first spoke, she continues. So she's like, if we have a son. Oh, and her billionaire husband was eating it all up. He was like, yep, 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 yep. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Kids, 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 good posture. Um, so she says, if we have a son, you're gonna teach him. Like, hold on, Mumu. Why? Like he you, he should he's a billionaire. He should be teaching your daughter and he should be teaching your son. Like and you are the mother who is, you know, a hustler, who's an entrepreneur, who's an actress, who's a creative. You should be teaching your son. You should be teaching your daughter. Like, both parents should be teaching everybody everything. I, I don't have kids, but that's how I feel it should be. And she is just like, yeah, you're going to teach our son. And I want you to teach him how to fight because boys who fight are popular. What? Mumu. You have been around all these men who are like hostile and rude and mean and it's made your life miserable and now you want a boy who can fight. I get it. Like, it's fine. You can teach your kid how to defend themselves. No issue with that. Your daughter and your son should know. However, that was a thing that like you thought? He should also be able to support himself. He should be able to respect women. You have this husband who leans towards being a jerk and being a jerk towards women. So like maybe instead of teaching your son how to fight, you could teach him how to not be a jackass. Mumu, get it together. But overall, I did, I, I liked the, the show. Um, so I, I definitely look, I, I look, I looked at it in the lens of like, what are the roles of women in this particular show? Um, I, some, I feel like I look at a lot of shows and movies and, and films like that. However, I'm sure there's other lenses that I look at it through as well. So just, um, some of the other women, uh, other roles of women in the show, there was her friend who was a screenwriter. So she was there always like really innovative, always trying to get her, her, um, uh, screenplay in front of the right person. And she was always taking meetings. So I loved that about her. She was able to lend her friend money when she needed it. Very awesome. But then there's this time where she moves in with the billionaire husband, his number two person. So when they're making this decision on like, oh, my friend's going to move in with my husband's number two, everybody's like, well, you know, she needs somebody to take care of her. Like they're not romantically involved or anything. It's just because like he's a man 
and she's not like so then she's like yeah yeah I need somebody to take care of me what you've been taking meetings with like these hot shots you've been trying to make your dream work like you're good you're you're okay you've been making it work why are you talking about yeah 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 I do need somebody to take care of me come on girl so um but I mean I guess if that was like her what in her heart she just wants somebody to take care of her I guess that's fine but I didn't feel like that's what it was it was just like a in this moment that's what everybody's saying so I'm gonna say it too sort of thing because she did not need anyone to take care of her she was with it she took care of her friend um so that was weird but you know I still liked her I respected her she does eventually get her um movie you know made and and she's very successful and then she's already hustling to make a second movie and she's making connections so I liked her character um then there was uh the grandma so grandma of the uh billionaire husband she was a class act I, I really enjoyed her she was the matriarch she was respected um she was just like a, a cool person so there was a time one of the many times where the husband billionaire husband is being mean to mumu and mumu finally like he had like locked her in the house and he had like security there and she couldn't leave the house so she finally like did this whole awesome thing to escape and she tricked the security and she tricked everybody and then as she's running out um grandma shows up because like the housekeeper called her and said hey they're fighting like you really need to get over here so grandma comes and she's just like oh my goodness mumu what's happening like did he bully you because he can't bully you i'm gonna i'm gonna really tell him off if he bullied you because he needs to respect you and be nice and i i just respected that because it was like you know she could take the sign of her grandson her the billionaire husband but she saw like no something is not right and i'm going to make it right even though it's not in favor i guess of my bloodline so i i liked her character and she was respected even by the billionaire her billionaire grandsons and even when he was a jerk so that was good too i like to see that and she was very with it very fashionable i i liked her i feel like her and i would be friends and we would just like shake our heads at all these situations happening in, in this show but we would just laugh and laugh and laugh too mm. and then um the last um group, there are many different roles of women which is really awesome you saw all types of women in this and in all different sorts of jobs so i loved that that was pretty cool um but in the billionaire's business so he had his group of executives and a couple of them were women. So I was happy with that. And then they'd always present to him different ideas and get yelled at and told off and points taken off of their performance reviews. Um, but it seemed like everybody, women and men, were treated the same in that executive position. And I loved that. That was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, overall, very entertaining show. Well-intended love on Netflix as of January 2020. Um, it gets a thumbs up from me i think you should check it out you know it's something entertaining if you're into like deception amnesia hypnosis uh billionaires um girls kicking butt you know all, all different sorts of things uh, different um like family issues and all all sorts of um class issues and wealth issues it might just be the show for you. So I think that's all I have to say. Um, I think I read that there might be a season two coming out. So if it does come out, I'm definitely going to watch it. it. It was very good. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see until next time. I hope that you continue on this journey with me to becoming fluent, conversationally fluent in Mandarin. And, um, for now, yeah, why don't you just like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Zai Zhen.